So hello everyone and welcome back to another scenario training with J1 Aviation. So this pilot report caught my eye by a 767. It mentions that the ride on final approach was like a six flag roller coaster. So ours here wasn't that bad, but it was a bit sporty nonetheless. So the scenario we're talking about today is what do you do when you encounter a six flag roller coaster turbulence type on final approach? So I'll give you some of the things that I think about and then you can comment below on what you do. So first and foremost, there's a saying that you should treat every approach as a go around with an option to land. So I like that because it reinforces the mindset that you can always go around. I think many times, and maybe due to some level of pride with pilots, we like to think that we can salvage every landing. Maybe we are high, maybe we are fast, maybe we're off center. And there's a certain amount of pride knowing that we can fix a poor approach and make a good landing. So it's a challenge, right? And we like challenges. But on final, we want to be stabilized. And tying this back to turbulence, if, you, if the turbulence is making us too unstabilized and not setting us up for a good landing, then it's good practice to go around. But there's another saying that taking off is optional, landing is mandatory. So you can't go around forever. So what do you need to know to fly the best possible approach that will result in a smooth touchdown? So the FAA's Airplane Flying Handbook has a couple good pointers here, which will help. So first let's talk about the approach and then we'll talk about the landing. So the first is to fly with a power on approach at an airspeed slightly higher than the normal approach speed. So this will provide more control of the airplane when strong horizontal wind gusts or up and down downdrafts are experienced. So slightly higher airspeed, you know, what exactly does that mean? So good practice is to use the normal approach speed plus one half of the wind gust factor. So if the wind is say 10 gusting to 20, the gust factor is 10. So you would add five knots to your normal approach speed. In any case, the airspeed and flap setting should be in line with the airplane manufacturer's recommendations in the AFM and POH. So now when you are on approach and getting bounced around, you need to accept some small fluctuations in airspeed, right? The gusts and the turbulence will be constantly changing the aircraft's speed, so instead of chasing it and making constant corrections, you know, we want to establish proper power, pitch, be trimmed out, and just make small corrections as necessary as you track towards the runway. So another good tip to help maintain control is to use partial flaps during the approach. So with partial flaps, your landing will be at a higher airspeed, which will help you have more control of the aircraft through the touchdown. Of course, be mindful of how much extra speed you are carrying and the runway distance available. So those are regarding the approach. Now let's talk about the landing. So by using less flaps and flying with a higher airspeed, when you touch down, your touchdown will be made with the airplane in approximately level flight attitude. So the FAA recommends that the pitch attitude touchdown should be only enough to prevent the nose wheel from contacting the surface before the main wheels have. And then after touchdown, you should avoid the tendency to apply forward pressure on the yoke as this may result in like wheel barrowing or loss in control. So you should allow the airplane to decelerate normally and assisted by careful use of the wheel brakes and avoid heavy braking until the wings aren't producing as much lift and the airplane's full weight is resting on the landing gear. Now, just as you have kept power in for the approach, you wanna keep a little bit of power in for the landing as well. So the FAA recommends to retard the throttle to the idle position only after the main wheels contact the landing surface and then closing the throttle too soon could cause a rapid rate of descent and result in a hard landing. So now let's run through it quickly. So don't be afraid to go around, fly a slightly faster speed, accept small deviations in speed, use small corrections as necessary, approach with partial flaps, land with some power, and then be mindful of the back pressure and over braking after touchdown. So following these tips will set you up for a successful approach and landing in turbulent conditions. So thanks everyone for watching today. We'll hope you join us on a future flight and thanks for flying J1 Aviation.